All right, guys. So we got Sinead O'Connor. Feel so different. <sighs> to change the things I've come, and the wisdom to know the difference. also left another comment too all right i'm not going to put that on the screen all right but i do want to address the, the stuff they were talking about all right so look this is something i think you know most of us like we just don't study uh you know that topic right you know but there was a really well-known comedian who addressed it in a stand-up special and he was not canceled I don't remember hearing like any backlash over it I don't ever remember hearing anyone say we are not gonna watch him anymore we don't want him in movies anymore we there was none of that all right and I'm guessing a lot of you guys probably know exactly who I'm talking about. All right. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find that clip. And if I can, I'm going to put it in here. All right. Because I think it's it really goes to show a huge double standard. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was perfectly okay for this comedian to say that but Sinead O'Connor says that and that's not okay now you know she doesn't have a career anymore all right that's cancel culture you know what I'm saying like that's exactly what it was you know what the thing about it was that it's really upsetting right is that you know, she got canceled, and I think a lot of people didn't realize that was happening. Um, like, she just went to SNL, she did her thing, and there was a story come out that she wasn't going to be allowed on there anymore. There was some backlash over it, and then that was it. There was no more like news coverage there was no like we need to uplift Sinead O'Connor because she's not being allowed to you know whatever was going on right there was no more information coming out or at least that I heard right after the whole SNL thing that was like that was the end of it. And once you go so long without hearing any information about a certain thing, and of course you got to keep in mind too, I didn't know how to feel about it because, like I said, that's not the kind of thing I study, right? You know, but I think I should try and fix that, all right? Because what I can say for sure is that at least, you know, her dedicated fans, like, they you know, believed and understood the message she was trying to get across about the subject. All right. So a while back when I did videos, right, doing reactions to Sinead O'Connor, what I said before was, 
that I didn't think she was going after the church itself, right? And I actually misspoke when I said that because someone else pointed out in the comments and they said, no, she was going after the church specifically, right? What I really meant was that she's not going after the religion, not targeting the people, right, who have that type of faith or who believe in those teachings, right? And according to this message that I got a little bit ago, seems to verify that, right? Um, that she wasn't going after the religion or anything like that. She was going after, you know, anyone who is using the church as a way of, you know, conducting horrible acts, let's say. All right. Now, if I can play this, you know, this guy is going to be a lot more graphic about it. All right. You know, but I think there's a difference between me watching someone be graphic about something and me saying something graphic. I think that's two totally different things as far as YouTube goes. So, you know, I'm still going to be careful about what I say. All right. And why is there a problem with pedophilia in the Catholic Church? Well, it's a big deal. You become a priest, retire this, and once a week, we're going to put you in a small, dark box, and people are going to tell you their nastiest sexual shit. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Yes, my son? Last night I had sex with two Thai twins, a slip and slide, a diving helmet, and a ferret. You know, like I said, he's going to be a lot more graphic than I ever would. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I think I kind of get what he's talking about. Maybe the reason why it's so bad. Because people are always, like, you know, confessing these kind of things. And then it just kind of, you know, kind of like opening Pandora's box kind of thing. Right? If that's really the case, then I would say, let's let's have some ground rules. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's come up with some boundaries here. Let's not go and confess like those kinds of sins. Can we just do that in prayer? Right? Do we need to go to a priest and say that? Just a thought. You know what I'm saying? Just a thought. Because the reason why I say that is because we have to understand how, you know, temptation works, right? You know, all temptation needs is an entry point into your brain. Once you see or hear something, temptation will travel with it, right? So even though that person might be confessing something, not trying to, you know, you, you know, not trying to tempt them at anything directly, but that temptation is always going to exist whenever you enter in these kinds of thoughts and ideas. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I don't even think I've ever seen this clip. You know, there was another one, which I want to play that because that, I think, was a more direct uh, answer for why she tore up that picture. All right. It's amazing that you would catch them, and it wasn't just enough to catch them, but they had the Divine Witness Protection Program. <laughs> now, find the priest, here's the pedophile, here's the priest, find the pedophile, find the priest, find the pedophile, there, move around. Here we go, we're going to say to make it. Don't you have to make them Here we go. Don't you ask, don't you tell, you might end up right in hell. Here we go, here we go. Here's your check direct from Rome. Buy yourself a brand new home. Moving around, moving around. Isn't that amazing? The Pope. Look at that. No one got mad. No one, you know, threw a fit. No one heckled him. All right. 
but you let Sinead O'Connor say something about it, and now it's a big problem. All right, like I said, seems like a double standard to me. Applause break number two. <laughs> but it was amazing when the Pope gathered all the cardinals in Rome and went, Tish! The only problem is he's dressed like Liberace's stunt double. Whoops! I have a solution, though. For a problem priest, little thing, a shock collar, if they go near a kid, it's like, you know, Timmy? Oh! <laughs> Tommy, I think, no, hit me. Or the automated confessional, could be fun. If this is a venal sin, press one. If this is a carnal sin, press two. If this is cardinal law, please stay on the line. Because you have to remember, it's not just a sin, it's a felony. <laughs> so we have to keep track. So I just did some research, all right. Robin Williams hosted SNL twice. The last time he hosted it was in 1988. All right. You know, and I've only seen a few of his specials. Uh, but it looks like maybe he talked about this a lot more than I thought. And I'm wondering if maybe that has some correlation there, right? With why he didn't continue to host SNL, right? The thing about it is... I would like to know what the actual reason is why she was banned from SNL for life. All right. I could understand a certain period of time simply because she went off script. Right. Like, I get it. There's a certain, like, you know, this is okay. That's not okay. Because it is life after all. You know what I'm saying? So... You have to be careful that you don't want people getting on there and, you know, you know, doing or saying the wrong things because it is live TV, right? So I get that to a point, you know, but to ban her for life, like that is saying a lot. That's a lot more than just, hey, she went off script, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I think that is something I would definitely be looking into to see, like, you know, what actually happened there, right? I thought that nothing would change me. not listening anymore Still you continue to refer to me I was not thinking anymore Look, the way that she puts everything together, right? Her, like, her production uh, is immaculate. Like, it is, like, so entertaining, right, to listen to her. Like, she has such a powerful voice and, like, stage presence. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I, I keep going back to the SNL thing, right? And, and I'm going to tell you why. I, I think it was just, not even just SNL, right? But like, all the other, like, what about the radio stations? What about MTV? What about all these other 
platforms. Did they all decide to cancel her too? Or was I just not watching at the right times? You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I grew up watching a lot of MTV, watching a lot of music videos, watching a lot of different things. And she just never came up. Like, anywhere I listened to, any, any type of show I watched, it never came up. It was basically after the SNL thing, like, that was pretty much the end of the story. And I don't think that's okay. You know what I'm saying? I think, you know, unpopular opinions should not be enough to get somebody canceled like that. All right. When I say the church itself, I mean like the religion aspect of it. The the faith, the Catholic faith, that kind of thing, right? So maybe that's what a lot of people thought. Like she's anti-Catholic uh, church and the, the religion aspect of it, right? You know, but... What it looks to me like is that wasn't her target. Her target was just the people who were hurting children, the people who were allowing for that to keep happening, for the people who were protecting the people that were hurting children, because probably they didn't want, you know, their church to... You know get a bad light on it right you know but the way i look at it is if that has happened then it has happened you can't just you know keep that from getting out in order to save the image of your church you know what i'm saying that's not how it works if you wanted to save the image of your church, then you would put out a statement and say that this has happened. Well, the person who did it is being held responsible for it. We're going to make sure that we get all of those people out of here that were doing that. You know what I'm saying? That's the way to put a, a positive light on your church. You know, but instead, I think they just wanted to hide it. To keep that from getting out. You know. And at the end of the day. How can any. Sensible person. Be upset. That she's targeting. That kind of person. Right. That she's targeting monsters. As the ones that she's going after. But because those monsters. Just happen to be affiliated. With a certain church. And a certain religion. She calls out those monsters, right? Then she gets labeled as she is hating on the religion itself. You know, on the on the the Catholic Church as a whole, instead of, you know, this systemic problem in this church and this church and this church. Instead, I think maybe they wanted to label her as like she hates the entire thing regardless of any abuse that was going on, right? Like, oh, it wasn't about the abuse. She just hates the, the church, right? Is that what was going on? I mean, it had to have been. You know, if they knew she was only targeting monsters, specific people who were doing horrendous things, why would that have been a problem? You know what I'm saying? Thank you.
I watched an interview that she had and she was asked about this like just she was asked do you regret you know your decision to rip up that picture right she said no I don't regret it whatsoever you know the other thing she said was she wasn't a pop singer she was a protest singer right so like that was her mission that's what she felt like she had to do it's, you know, it is a really interesting story. All right. You know what? I'm just glad I'm at least learning about all this now. All right. And I do not expect to. Don't let me fall. another thing they put in the comments too that even her friends was turning against her you know what i'm saying and you know it's just crazy all right you know it seems like at the very least her friends would be able to understand like where she was coming from on it
she just shows so much like raw emotion when she's performing. You know what I'm saying? Like so much so that when I first saw Nothing Compares to You, right? Like she showed so much like emotion and conviction and like I thought it was literally her song. Like that she wrote that song about her life. About someone that she lost. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is just incredible how how much of a performer she is. You know what I'm saying? And except with this one, like I know for sure this one is about her life. Right? You know, when it says this was life 1990, you know, and I think that might be the same year that that SNL episode happened. All right, but let me do some research real quick. Let me make sure. But I believe that was around the same time that that had happened. So it says that it was in 92 when that happened. And so, according to this, right, it says, Feel So Different Live 1990. So, if this song came out before that, then this song, like, wasn't, you know, written for that specific incident, right? You know, it might have been written for a similar incident, but not that one specifically, right? Because... How could you write a song about an incident that hadn't happened yet? That's a good question. You know what I'm saying? I would like to know how she pulled that one off. But, just to be sure, let me see when this song came out. Right? Because it could be, you know, it is YouTube and someone like wrote in this title. Maybe they got the date wrong, right? So maybe this live performance came later on. Because if this live performance was actually done in 1990, and she didn't rip up the picture until two years later, in 92, then this song can't be about an incident that hadn't happened yet. You know what I'm saying? So, as far as I can tell, the song came out in 1990. All right. So, even though the song wasn't written specifically about that incident, I think we can still apply it to that. You know, it is still something that is in her own words, right? That is fitting. Like, if she were to write a song, you know, that was talking about that incident, this would certainly fit that. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's why I'm saying I think it's still feasible that we can apply this to that incident. Even though it is not directly related to that. Because like I said, that, that hasn't happened yet when this song came out it could be that you know she knew she was going to pull off a stunt like that at some point and that she would get a lot of backlash for it and that she would get friends turning against her and you know i i, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibilities all right it was around the same time. Like I said, it was only like two years later. And I watched quite a few interviews, and I'm pretty sure she did mention that she knew at some point she was going to do, you know, something like that. She just didn't know, like, exactly what it was going to be. But, like, you know, when the opportunity came up, she was like, I'm going to do it. Like, this is what I'm doing, because she, you know, was on SNL, and she's like, here we go. This is what we're doing. All right. You know, and I'll say this. 
she definitely wasn't afraid of getting backlash. You know what I'm saying? You know, I think that's something that is a rare quality for someone to have. You know, nowadays, I mean, we got so many people that won't speak their mind because they're afraid of losing their audience. All right. And I just think that's a terrible thing. You know, like you should always speak your truth. Whether it's right or wrong, speak your truth. And let people give you their opinions. All right. And if your truth is backed by reality, then it'll hold up on its own. And if not, then you should, you know, take in their feedback and say, maybe I might be wrong about that. Maybe I need to, you know, reevaluate that and then bring a new thought, bring a new idea to the forefront and say, this is now what I believe. And keep doing that, and you will keep learning and growing as a person, right? But if you are relying on being in echo chambers, you know, and not allowing any alternate ideas or alternate theories to penetrate your bubble, then you've now created a situation to where you're no longer learning as you go through life. You know, I like the phrase, learn something new every day. All right. You know, I think that's something a lot more people should hold to. Try and learn something new every day. All right. Listen to a new idea, a new theory. Listen to something new that you don't agree with. Right. And just evaluate it based on what it is. Don't look at the person who's telling you that. Look at the facts. You know what I'm saying? Do a proper evaluation on it. And that applies to this situation here. Right? When that happened. They should have done a proper evaluation. And came to her and said... Okay, you know, what's this all about? Who is it that you're targeting exactly? You know what I'm saying? I think that would have been a lot better. You know, and I, like I said, I don't think she should have been outright canceled for that either. That was, you know, such a beautiful song. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was amazing. Like, her stage presence, y'all, you know, is just so powerful, right? You know, and I even love, like, how animated she gets. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and I think that is, like, from the emotions that she's feeling when she's performing. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, y'all let me know what else I should check out from Sinead O'Connor. All right. You know, the last thing I'm going to point out, y'all, she had, you know, such a strong and powerful voice. All right. But there were a lot of people, apparently, who worked really hard to silence her voice. And I don't think that's okay. You know, I really don't. I, I don't think that was all right. So, all right. That's it for now, y'all.